Hello and welcome to my new video. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Lex and this is my island, Antilia. Today I wanted to shake it up a bit, so this video is going to be different from my usual speed build or inspiration video. I wanted to do a sort of pros and cons for restarting versus flattening your island. I get a lot of questions about that on Instagram, especially from people who wonder how I decide to restart every time I finish an island, like how I managed to do that both emotionally and just logically considering gameplay, why? So in this video, I'm gonna start with the pros and cons to restarting, and then we're gonna move into flattening. Let's go. When I was brainstorming for this video, one of the first pros that came to mind for restarting is that you get a fresh new layout and you can change the names both for your representative and for your island. That's super helpful for me because I do make a ton of different islands. I think Antilia is my fifth or sixth island that I've designed. So much easier to differentiate between them if they have different names rather than being like, this is the third edition of Antilia. Another thing that's helpful is that you can get different versions of the things you can't change, including what I'm standing on now, beach rocks, and pause to take in Marty. Look at him go. Sweet little baby boy. Okay, that's all. But another thing you can't change, your peninsula. And the shape of it can really affect how you're designing your island. I find it helpful to have a larger peninsula, although here, as you can see, it gets very narrow at the end. And another thing that you can't change is resident services. The proximity to your airport can determine what your whole entrance looks like because can you do terraforming there or is the resident services too close? Who knows? There are some others, of course, but one last thing that you can't change is the secret beach. It can be in the middle at the back of your island or it can be closer to the left or right side. So some people really care about that because of builds they have in mind. So yeah, you get to pick the ideal map for your ideas. A second and really big pro for me is that you can keep your island as a dream address. So I deleted Lost Falls and as you can see, I'm still here deleting the save data did not get rid of my dream address and I can visit it from my new island. Another fun thing is that you can make a dream address on the new island, so for me Antilia, and it won't overwrite the old one. You'll just have two dream addresses and you can visit both and other people can as well. So when I delete Antilia, I'll have dream addresses for Lost Falls and Antilia. That's just fun. You don't have to say goodbye to your island or to the villagers. You can visit them again and I think that is so precious. Something else that I think is super helpful when you restart the game is that you go in with a much better understanding from the beginning about how you want to play the game. This comes in handy, for instance, with the first pro, which is you get to pick a new layout. Now you know what kind of layout you want. You can tell the difference between the maps. You know what is important. Whereas I, for one, the first time I played the game, had no idea how important things like the peninsula and the resident services would be. Another thing that people like to prioritize in New Islands is keeping Blathers in his tent. That's something you wouldn't consider the first go around because you just follow the tutorial, but that's something that you can do. And you'll also know that there is a limit on bridges and inclines, so you can better economize them, keep track of how many you're using, how many you have left, and use that to help you plan your island. One thing that I didn't even consider the first time that I restarted one of my islands is that it's definitely an opportunity to meet new villagers without feeling like you're betraying your old ones. Because yeah, you restarted, which effectively threw them into the void, but you didn't ask them to leave the island. And if you have a dream address, like I said, they're still happy and vibing on that island. So this gives you an opportunity to meet villagers you might not have chosen if you only had one island. For me, that is especially Egbert and Zell. I think they're both both so cute. Now that I've given you some solid reasons to restart, let's talk about the cons there because I don't want you to do it without knowing what you're losing. So that means that you lose all your museum progress. 
You lose all of your art, all of your fish, all of your bugs. Everything is gone. Like it is out of here. You don't have anything anymore. Um, I say among other things because you're also no longer gonna have things like reactions. You're gonna have to re-friend your villagers, which can be a tedious process and it can just be a hassle to not have any of that. Another con is that you will have to redo the tutorial. This is kind of a gray area because some people restart the game just to redo the tutorial, to kind of relive the early game, and I think that's perfectly valid. I included it as a con because it is time consuming, so if you're more of an island designer, it can be a lot to get through in order to get back to making islands and figuring out your theme. I'm including this just to remind you all how verbose Tom Nook can be. Meeting new villagers might be a pro, but you do have to hunt for your dreamies all over again. And without the Nook Miles tickets, you may be had on your old island. You are broke now. You have to accept it. And I mean, one big con to going on any villager hunt is that you have to talk to Orville for like 30 hours each time. Um, and who knows, when you get to the island, maybe you forgot to place a house setting and there's not even a villager there. So could be all for naught. Like I mentioned, you are broke now. So another con is that you don't have any bells. Like you're just, yeah, nothing. And something that really sucks is that you do lose all of your cataloged furniture. You might be like, duh. But some things you might not even think about when you're excited about restarting. And it can be so tedious to refind all of that furniture. I mean, there are thousands of furniture items in the game. You don't have any of them anymore. And you also don't have any DIYs. So it can involve a lot of hunting. Even if you use treasure islands, it can still be a lot. Also, here's me attempting to buy a party popper with no bells. The Nook twins are just really they're not having it there there is no credit line they say there there's nothing you can do those are all of the big pros and cons i can think of for restarting or at least those are the ones that are important to you i have summarized them in this little graphic if you want a screenshot i you know maybe maybe that would be important for you but yeah, so those are things to think about before you restart. And now we're going to get right into flattening. The first pro that comes to mind, and perhaps the most obvious, is that you get to keep all of your resources. So that bank account balance, yeah, baby, that's not going anywhere. It can also really be helpful for if you are redesigning your island because you'll have the bells to move houses and create bridges and inclines. You also get to keep all of your Nook Miles, which I guess at a certain point they're not even important, but you get to keep them. You also get to keep all your reactions. I mean, there are so many and you do have to spend time getting to know your villagers and everything, which is part of the game. It's really nice to do it. But let's be honest. Do you want to see this empty wall of like just blankness in your reactions again? Literally this weighs so much into every time I restart, I hate losing the reactions. Another thing you might not even think about is that when you restart, you lose all of your stamps and they do keep track of like the day that you achieved whatever accomplishment it is. So it's nice to have those. It's also admittedly nice to still have the villagers that you know and love, especially if you have formed close friendships with them. It can be really hard to let them go. Even if you plan on having them on your new island after you restart, it can suck to say goodbye to them. And Pearl is an example on my island. I love her so much and she's so sweet. Just look at her little face. So yeah, if you flatten, you don't have to say goodbye to these precious little babies. Something else that can be really helpful if you flatten is that you don't lose your layout or your build. So if you're like me and you can't stand decorating beaches, if you decorated them and you flatten, you don't have to pick up everything off the beach if you don't want to. You can just leave it there and boom, your beaches are already done. So that's a big pro. And if you have things you like, like for instance, I really like that I have a long pier here on Antilia. I don't have to get rid of that if I flatten. It's still here familiar island and I know the boundaries. Another thing is that as soon as you finish flattening, you don't have to worry about unlocking terraforming in order to start designing your island. You've already got it. You don't have to worry about getting a certain star rating. You can just hop right back into designing with a fresh empty canvas. 
All of that said, there are of course also cons to flattening. And the first one is that let's be honest, it can be exhausting, especially if you're already experiencing Animal Crossing burnout, tearing down everything and then staring at just a blank island, it can be a lot. Marty does not sympathize, but it's exhausting. It also kind of sucks because you lose that version of your island forever. So if you're like me, you grow attached to your builds after you do them. And that's one reason why I restart so that I can revisit those builds in a dream address that I know isn't going to be overwritten. But if you flatten your island, as soon as you update your dream address with whatever new build you're doing, that old version of your island is gone forever. And you can't visit your dream address anyway from the same island, which is just so sad. So once you flatten, you don't get to see it anymore. It's gone. One last thing to consider is that flattening can be very costly, especially if you have a very full and flushed out island and you've used all eight of your bridges and all eight of your inclines. I mean, think about it. Just to destroy those, it takes, what, 160,000 bells in 16 days? If you don't time travel, it's going to take you over two weeks just to demolish everything and to move all the buildings. It's $50,000 for each one you move. That's, I said dollars, I meant bells, but that is so much, like, it just takes so much time, so much money in the game, it's astronomical, truly. That's all the pros and cons I could think of off the top of my head, so here's a graphic summarizing all of those, and of course, use the comments as a place for discussion if there are others that you think I should have included, that's totally valid, I want to hear about them. I wanted to talk about why I prefer restarting. I hope the video wasn't like super biased towards restarting, but I personally prefer it because I don't like, I'm super nostalgic. I don't like to lose the builds that I've done. I regret every day that I flattened Lorien. I miss the original spring Lorien that I built. So this is kind of a way of avoiding that regret. Yeah, it sucks that I can't edit islands that I've deleted, but I can always visit them and you know, if I'm feeling sad about my current island, I'll just waltz on over to my old one. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful for those of you trying to make the decision between flattening and restarting. I'm an advocate for restarting, but let me know also what you prefer to do. I'd love to hear it. Here's Peaches to tell you all goodbye for now. I love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!